I said, you too look like you're up to no good. Y'all just said they're doing all right. Page 65. Listen at, at the, this verse. The love of God is greater far than tongues can or pen could ever tell. It goes above the high star, reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave His Son to win. His erring child He reconciled and parted from His sin. Last verse says, Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. I've uh, urged you Sunday to be thinking about what Christ would be doing at each time during the day or, or each day during the week. No doubt today He knows that the Passover will soon, Passover dinner will take place uh, tomorrow night on Thursday, what we call Thursday. He will sit down, he will eat that. <coughs> and then he'll do something totally unexpected. And that's the Gerger towel. Lost your feet. What a servant should have done when they came into the house. What nobody did for them, our Lord did. Man, what love. Let's sing this song.
Isn't that pretty? Beautiful song. Beautiful song. Might as well do 310. He took my sins away.
So what we do uh, at Calvary, we we'll have fellowship only. Okay, how much? Three twenty-eight. Three twenty-eight. Three twenty-eight. Let's have fellowship. God's son but was available. The thief, Jesus said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. He told the Father, said, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. To them that look to him, I, I, I believe the centurion was, was saved that day. That's my opinion. Amen. Amen. Uh, remember Sister Carolyn Decker? Uh, there actually was two or three people messaged me today. She's just the only one I can remember because she just sent me a message there just a little bit ago there that, that needs prayer uh, for healing. Remember my uh, daughter's neighbor? They uh, couldn't get him to come to the door the other day, so they had to break into his house and they found him on the floor. And uh, they said he could have been there anywhere from 18 or 12 to 36 hours. And they took him to the hospital, so I don't know anything else. They said he wasn't responding. He said, well, they said he wasn't talking, that he was just laying there. So, I don't know his first name, but his last name is the... Uh... <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shaley Mead's uh, uh, dad also, they put him in the hospital today as well, so remember him. 
like the church member of Donna Powell. She has got to have a surgery, and they've said if she hasn't, she could die. If she don't have it, she could die. So there's a member of that, that family, a member of youth and their family. Thanks, everybody, for praying for Michael. He came through his surgery good today. At least four weeks before you put any weight on it, and then after that, he's looking at therapy uh, for a while. So uh, remember them. Jamie, remember Shauna. She's got uh, went to the hospital. She drove herself to the urgent care on Sunday evening, and uh, they sent her directly to the ER. And uh, they found that she has a blood clot in her lung. And uh, She's on medication and doing pretty good right now. She's not allowed to do a whole lot of stuff, but they're working on her, so she'll be fine. And uh, remember George Darling's family. Um, family gave George just, a, well, the day called the other day, it was just a week, and then I saw his father-in-law, and he said it was just a matter of days. So I remember him in prayer. He was a real good friend of Larry's. I tried to write my friend. Remember the rest of my family for salvation. Remember uh, Steve Mosley. He uh, died yesterday. He had a liver transplant. It's Monday night. Everything so far is going well for him. I'm in the hospital today. The lady there, um, she's worked over Overbrook. And Rebecca actually worked with her at Overbrook. And her husband was there scheduled for surgery today. Um, his name's Clarence Norris. And they took him back to surgery and they couldn't actually do the procedure he was there for because his heart rate was too high. And when they brought him back, they brought him back just right they did Michael and they actually admitted him to the hospital. And I told his wife Nancy that I wasn't going to for him. The man's name is Arthur. His wife's name. I don't know his first name. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come to us at the while, right? Yeah. About 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Have to get to the alphabet so many times. <laughs> Let's pray earnestly for Sunday service because we're going to have probably several years now on Sunday morning that's lost of being in the house. I'll get all the ones in the nursing home and the hospital to show you the ones that can't get out to be with us. Remember Larry too. He's got several appointments next week, and uh, he's not very happy camper. But I said, you know, I'm the secretary. I'll make him and say, come. I'll just write it down. <laughs> he gets aggravated at me. He says, I don't want to have to go so much. And I said, you know what? Keep you going. Period. That's why. So he's all right. Remember Bud to Jamie. Uh, he finally went to an appointment at the heart doctor in Columbus, and he asked to go up there May the third to see what they're going to do with putting stents in and his hernia operation. And see if he can have it yet. So just remember him in your prayers. Remember drawing in for salvation um, and Katie and pray for mom. She is doing better. Um, when did Derek get out of school? Huh? When did Derek get out of school? He's um, coming home Friday morning. For the summer? No, just for Easter. I don't know when it is. I think it's in April or May, maybe. Oh, pretty like he was about done last time he was here. Only had a couple weeks. That's about what it was he's been back. So anyhow, let's pray for Derek. Let's pray for Tina and Sean. I've been talking to her. She said she might try to make it tonight. That's why I keep going back. Well, but so, she told somebody me come they, in. I gave her a lot to think about. So. Yeah. Remember Tina and Sean. They're doing good. They're doing well. Yeah. I don't know what to do about my foot. They said if I don't get surgery done, the bones could come through and I'll lose my leg. If I do get surgery done, I could get infection and lose my leg. So, just 
pray God sends me in the right direction. Genuine, uh, thank you, Lori, for the prayers. And Andrew done well with fasting. You know, she's got this mouth and she's going to have quite a few tests this month. So just keep on your prayers and prayers. Like at the end of the tunnel on that school. Good thing. Somebody else. Uh, unspoken request, but I put it to the hand. Anyway, Larry Gordon, would you be this? Father, we thank you for the offers that allow us to humble ourselves on Lord and just bring our petition before you, Lord. Father, I know that you've heard even in every run of the way to us, but let's before you, but Lord, Father, we pray for each and every one of us, Lord. Pray not our will, but your will be done in front of us, Lord. Father, we do pray for the church and pray for the family, Lord. Pray for all of you, Lord. Father, as we come to you, we have a something a little different tonight I would like for each individual to stand and uh, try to tell the church what Easter means to you I know that's hard how it's impacted your life maybe a favorite Easter memory Brad yeah, uh, I enjoy Easter because it's a good time because the Lord, you know, He died for he died for our sins and stuff like that. And it's good, good that we're all here to worship Him, show that we do love the Lord. And the Lord did the did the ultimate, paid the price on the cross, and uh, that, that's why we're here today. And that's that's what Easter is all about. I don't know, do I love him? Thank him for Easter. I know that the scripture says that we're the firstborn of the resurrection. So I suppose that means uh, we're going to be resurrected one of these days to, to a place we don't know nothing about other than what a little bit we know, can read the scripture about heaven. I know the Lord has touched my heart and I've never been the same since I gave her over. That old cry of life. You know, it, 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 you know, when you think about the ones that's unsaved, just think how hard it was you for you to go to the daughter and confess your sins. I mean, it, it's hard. It's, it's, it was hard for me. And I, I probably sat in church service and gripped the pews and did a little bit of everything else to keep them even in. But once I gave in, I, I'll never been the same. And I love him. I thank him for the resurrection. 
thank him for one of these days coming back. You know, that Easter means that this means that he went to the cross, went to the grave, and was resurrected. That we might be born again of the Spirit. I love it. That short on have nothing to do with Easter eggs, Easter bunnies. <laughs> Somebody else? Come on. I love him. That's me. He did get a rise. He's coming back for us. Amen. So we have to worship him for that and just thank him. Care enough about us to do that. I love him for everything he does for me. Be safe wherever I've been. Stays right along with me, takes care of me. Thank you and love you. <coughs> Barber said next. I'll just say I love the Lord you me. Like Brother Charlie said, it, uh, I don't know, like you said, 360 degree difference in meaning nowadays for the last, I don't know, 25, 30 years. And it was it's growing up, like Charlie said, it was Easter eggs and the Easter Bunny. It's just all together different now when you think of Jesus rising from the grave, you know. It's just, just totally different. I just love the Lord. singing that song, The Love of God, where would we be without the love of God? Where would this whole world be? There's so much wickedness and everything in the world, but where, how would it be without the love of God? Well, I'm like Larry, it used to be all about the bunny, Easter bunny and the eggs and everything, but since I been quite a few years now that it means a lot more to me than it used to. And I thank God for everything He's done for me and, and that everything He's going to do for me again. I love the Lord, I thank Him. I was thinking about like when they were out of kidney and we went up on the Fairview up on the hill there and they had three crosses up there and had a sepulchre made and had the stone rolled away and we always sang Hill Road and had church up there ever since. On Easter Sunday morning, it's a block, and uh, I, you know, I just stuck with me all the years. And I feel like I like to go to Sunday service, but I always did. So uh, I just love him and thank him that he did die and rose again for us. I'll say, I want to thank him for everything he's done. And like Katie, when I've been up there, same place, simple years, and it's really heartwarming. And you get, uh, we've had several lost people up there and you see them crying and stuff. And, um, and I want to thank you also for great drawing me here to this church and being the youth leader. I love being with them kids. Nick? Thank you. I want to thank God for dying on the cross for our sins and then rising up on the third day and giving us the hope <coughs> for eternal life. So you know, I'm staying tonight. I mean, I'm like, I want everybody else to say, and you know, I'm thankful that the Lord, um, when He died on the cross, He died for our sins and He arose and that we can have life. That, you know, that, that we can live just, just as well as he is. And you're talking about a favorite Easter memory. Um, probably favorite Easter memory that, that I've got that stands out in my mind is before we moved, we were pastor at Lundell, and we did the play of Green Ales. And during that play, you played the part of Jesus, and just, you know, just the whole trans you know, through that play, just, just watching, you know, the power that's in that and the power that's, you know, just the Spirit of the Lord 
that came down upon that plate. And, you know, there's just stuff that's just always just etched in the back of my mind and I'm thinking of. Uh, No more names. Okay, I'm sincere. <clears throat> um, one of these rumors that stands out in my mind is back in the 80s, shortly after this church was built, we had we did a play called The Passion of Christ, which basically went through the whole judging of Jesus, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it makes you stop and think. Just what you went for. I mean, this one thinking for is definitely come out. Someone else? So you have a song? <coughs> Somebody testify while she gets ready. I'm standing up and saying, I love the Lord. And I'm going to play Rhonda tonight. She ain't cry, so I'm going to cry for her. <laughs> I started crying for her just as you said that. Though. We, I mean, even though we knew what the true meaning of Easter was, my mother until she wasn't able to do it anymore, always made sure each of us, I mean, even after we were grown, had Easter baskets, she made Easter eggs. And, when we were growing up, we always had an Easter outfit. It may not have been a store-bought outfit, but she always made sure that, and lots of times she'd stay up to ours and not him in her out dresses or whatever. And uh, I'm thankful that I had a mom and dad that brought me up the right way. I'm glad he came down and died for us and took away our sins. He didn't have to, but he did. And I thank him and I love him. Remember the thief 
sang by his side He's birthed with love and compassion Then he took him to paradise If that is a is dry There's no stars in the sky And the sparrow can't fly If that is In heaven to me There's no feeling like this If that is in love There's no feeling like this If that is I probably the same thing about what Larry's talking about, and, and it goes from uh, the Last Supper through the Resurrection, and uh, was just going to do it on Saturday night, and on that Saturday night, Lundell Church probably would see a hundred. Had the fire marshal come there, I'd have went to jail. We had, against that side, I mean, chairs crammed against that side on both sides. We did have the windows raised up. It's just so hot that so many people, the air conditioner wouldn't keep up. Set seats down once, even one side of the thing, a set of seats across the front. Set of seats across the back. I mean, we had 150, 160 people in the building and turned people away. We had, if I remember right, we had 11 people saved on Saturday night, 11 or 12, and three or four. We ended up, I think, 15 or 16 people saved just through that play. I've never been around anything like that. That uh, we did we do it when I was at. Oak Tiger? No, at Rutland. I know we did it when I was at Rutland. I didn't know if we did it at Oak Tiger, but we added the whipping post scene when we did it at Rutland. And uh, there's a technique that you can use that, you know, instead of what you do is you come over, you don't break, you don't break anything as far as your your motion here, and you just let really that let that whip fall, and, and it don't tire somebody up. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but I remember during that and I, after that we went closed the curtains and went out into the uh, would go out into the fellowship hall and then I came back in through the hall and down the aisle carrying the cross. But I remember going out into the f fellowship hall part of it and I just broke down crying. Saying, God, I ain't worthy. He took those stripes, Brother Charlie, that I might be healed.
would you sing when he was on the cross? Yeah, you? Would you come sing that? Somebody testify why she comes. Again, this to me, this is a special service. That's why I felt like we needed to do it just different. I, we'll get back into Bible study next week. And if you studied hard this week, you'll be ready for next week. All right, don't get mad at me. But this is a special service tonight. Well, just get up and testify.
now that I'm older, when I think of Easter, I think of the cross, and I think of that yes, stuff. I just picture that body of the cross. But when I was a young brat, I had three sisters that I still have three sisters, and they're all much younger than I am. I'm eight years older than the oldest one, so we always had new dresses and my brother had a little suit. I was older and my clothes didn't look as cute as the other girls because they were little and they had little curly things and I didn't like that. And I always had to wear these stupid looking hats. I don't like to get some of these hats that I would wear. One looked like a bowl that just pulled down into your head like this. And uh, now I think, I think it looks like something that they probably wore back in that World War I. I mean, the fire, the fire is not just a big old tree. <laughs> that was the awesome thing. But, you know, I appreciate the fact that I had parents that cared enough to send us in the right direction. And they went to at times, but not always. Um, I had an aunt that was very, very ill, and she died when she was 47. But I can always remember, it didn't matter how bad she was on Easter Sunday, she always carried chicken noodles up our, to our house. And we had, a, we had a big bunch of steps that she would go to the front porch, and she would always have to crawl up there because us kids were too lazy to help her. But, um, you know, I, I, I can even taste those noodles things. <laughs> But you know, it, it, there's just a lot of things I could go on and on. But uh, I, I went back there. I went back to the home place. I was going to find out how I guess. Um, about 60, 70 years ago, I had a little bit of a My brother and I planted a tree. And my, my mom said, well, when my dog got the tree, mom, she said, why did you bring that tree here? And he said, I want to plant it. She said, you take it down here and you're going to be from the road there. She said, I don't want that tree up here in the yard. So I went with him and we planted the tree. Well, I put my by there the other day and the tree was there. No one thought of that, no one thought of that. I'm like, I'm going to fix that. So yesterday, I went to the grocery store. And I decided I was going to go to the people's house and see if I could have some of that food. I would knock on the door and I said, uh, ma'am, I want to thank you crazy for anything that I was raised with and help plant that tree that's down. And I just wondered if I could have a couple pieces of it. She just looked at me like, yeah, you are, but maybe you, know, you can have all of it you want. So I took three pieces of wood, one stem of Charles' fireplace, one I'm taking to my brother, and the other's for me. And, um, you know, I, I just thank God he, he let that tree grow for a purpose, for a memory of our childhood. And then he stayed with us during our childhood and kept us safe. And it's been with me for the last 20 some years, I've been saved. And I just thank you for that. So you kept one, so if Larry gets out of line, you hit him in the head with. We've got to figure it out, Larry. Duck, all right? So you see her get that piece of wood out, duck. I figure so. <laughs> Somebody else. Let me some the resurrection up to what it means to me, I can sum it up in one word. It's justified. If Christ be not risen, ye are yet in your sins. But He arose that we might be justified in the sight of God. That means when God looks at you and I, he doesn't see us as we are, but He sees us as Christ is. <laughs>
Again, so unworthy. Justified. Somebody else. Someone else. Hope. Right? You could sum it up in one the one word of hope. Go ahead. Not only when it's our time to go when we meet them again, but there's coming a day when, you know, understand this. When you die, you don't get that glorified body yet. You will not get it until the resurrection. That's when you receive that glorified body. That's when you receive the robe of righteousness uh, and the crown of life. Uh that you know that's providing if we pass away and, and before the rapture but if you know if the rapture takes place think about what would happen right now if the rapture took place right now the aches and the pains that you're feeling gone <laughs> you know and as has been testified you know it that resurrection gives us hope that even though we may have to follow that hearse to the cemetery and the casket to the hole in the ground and see it, see it covered up to know that that's not the end. Someone else. But that's the thing. People people think that this life is all there is. That there is no uh, there is no eternal life out there. It's either eternal life or eternal death. We uh, we have as a society we have put death as uh, we have taught that it's ceasing to exist when it's really just separation between God and man. Someone else. All right, this is how we're going to end this service, and then we'll praise the Lord if nobody else has testimony. Anybody? I want, girls, go ahead and come. Sandy and Susie, come on. That's how we got better. Turn your hymnals to page 182. 
We're going to sing Because He Lives. That's how we'll close out this service. Anybody else have a testimony before we do that? Let's stand and sing 182 if you're able to stand. If you're not, sing from your seat, but most of all, sing from your heart. Anybody before we start singing? I'm just going to lay there and let the battery run down.
and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen.